rescue mission in Moloch's domain. The Resistance planned a sabotage of barbaric ritual, the Ceremony of Fire. Did you plan to stop this ritual from happening? Not exactly. A direct assault on Moloch would have been unwise at that time. We wanted to save the prisoners by stealth. What was the plan? Our part was to get inside the camp, undercover. Up close, we could scan the appearance of one of Moloch's generals and use a mimetic device to take on a holographic disguise. That way, we wouldn't get hassled by the goons. The job required someone with both technical know-how and a flair for the dramatic. Luckily, our team included such a man, Sam Watson, our technical officer, old buddy of mine. Once inside, we do the same impersonation routine with a mimetic device on the High Priestess, Severta. She was conducting the ritual. With Sam acting as her, we could stall the proceedings while the kids were taken to safety. All right, what better introduction than this, I guess? Well, indeed, it's designed to be an introduction, mm. after all. Um, it does uh, introduce, uh, obviously, what you have to do in the level uh, with, with a a stealth game, it's vitally important that people understand fundamentally what they have to do. So we have a number of cutscenes throughout the game uh, and we also have audio introductions. One of the things uh, we touched on at Christmas um, was how, the, uh, how our game, which is telling a new story within the Stargate universe, uh, still has a number of touch points with the original TV series. Uh, and I think today is another good example of that. Uh, your mission here today is to stop a ceremony of fire, uh, which, which does get referenced in, uh, in the episode Birthright in, in I think, series eight of the, uh, of the TV series. Uh, Moloch, the uh, Gwald system lord who uh, controls uh, this planet, we're on planet Hacktail here, um, has decreed that all Jaffa girls should be burned alive um, because they are, they are useless to him. Only men can fight and, and thus the girls must be burned alive. Uh, it's, it's therefore up to your Stargate team to, to stop this from happening. So this is basically you're, you're scanning through the map to see what you have to do and then going back to your starting point. Yes, they're, they're big old maps and, and uh, you, you need to understand uh, the challenges that, that lie ahead of you. Um, one of the challenges we had when we were working out what we were going to show today was how we were going to cram a whole level into a mere 45 minutes uh, as there, there simply isn't time realistically to, to play through from yeah, start these are to pretty finish. Big, yeah. So what are we seeing now? Um, we are seeing the camp here. Um, we're introducing two new characters today um, who are, um, we have Max, who is the sniper. Max Bolton is our, is our sniper. Um, he uh, made a brief appearance at, at Christmas as, as one of the uh, supporting characters. He has uh, sort of typical sniper characteristics. He is very good at killing people from a long way away, uh, which is vitally important for a sniper. Um, given that kind of role, he, he has very much the, the grizzled veteran about him and the, the sort of the hard-bitten cynicism you would expect. Um, he's also hooking up with his buddy Sam Watson today, um, who they were uh, in, our, in our law, they were originally army buddies together. Sam is a much more cunning character. Um, he uses uh, a number of te technological tricks uh, to be able to uh, achieve his mission objectives. What we are seeing today is uh, Sam and Max, uh, great names indeed for gaming characters, um, they have something of a wise-cracking relationship from time to time, and um, having assessed all the options, um, they can only come up with something ridiculous. So uh, the plan is that uh, Sam is going to try and get into, uh, into this small encampment over here. Uh, there is a Jaffa general uh, who, is, who is in the camp. Um, it will be up to Sam to incapacitate that general and then use his mimetic scanner uh, so that he can take on the appearance um, of, a, uh, of a Jaffa general. This will fool most of the foot soldiers around the map. Uh, the, the Jaffa warriors uh, and the general grunts uh, will, will be fooled by this. Um, however, the Jaffa generals themselves um, are not, for the most part, quite so stupid. Um, so they will still spot you. Um, but it's the only way they can find into the camp. So Sam needs to get up there. Uh, he needs to incapacitate the general and uh, scan him so he can proceed into the camp. Come on, um, Annie. Come on. Let's see the magic. So as you can see, you can control more than one character yeah. simultaneously. We didn't show any of that. 
uh, last time. Um, I think this, this map uh, shows again well uh, the importance of, of having two characters who work together, um, but will also need to uh, occasionally fulfill their own individual objectives. All right, all right. What's happening here is... It's got a classic uh, sort of stealth mechanics here with a, a view cone where you can be seen, uh, the, the solid part of the view cone, and the broken part of the view cone is uh, you can hide in bushes and so on and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, Annie, uh, this is a live broadcast, as you can see, um, has alerted someone. So, um, yeah, she needs to find a brute force uh, solution to this problem, I think, because... Uh, Which brings the question, I guess. Oh, Annie. Oh, come on, Annie. So it brings a question, is, you know, how many different ways of going through a scenario are there? There's always going to be a choice um, of, of ways to approach um, any given mission. Uh, almost all missions, there are a few exceptions, but almost all missions you will have a small core of characters you have to select every time. There will also be one or two uh, optional characters you will need to select every time. We haven't met all of those yet, so we can't break down exactly how that works. Uh, but there's, uh, each character will be bringing a range of skills, uh, so the characters you choose will define how you go about the mission. When we were uh, preparing this broadcast, uh, the developers sent me a walkthrough video, um, and it was very different to the way I myself have approached this level. I, I was genuinely okay. taken aback by, oh, okay, so you can do it that way. I I'd, I'd, um, adopted a rather sort of more brute force, clumsy approach and um, slower moving did. through. Um, but also, uh, you can choose to sort of sneak through very slowly individually. You can move your team around as, as a close-knit unit. The team will always need to work together, but how that manifests itself can be very different depending on the situation. So, yeah, there's, there's always more than one way to solve any given problem. Um, in, right. in I, guess you, I guess you go through the list of tasks within the map and that you know how you achieve these tasks are exactly entirely up to you. Uh, your objectives are, are quite high level uh, you've got to uh, in this mission you will have to disguise as a Jaffa general um, you will use that to reach the priestess who is going to uh, conduct the ceremony um, you will then knock her out impersonate the priestess um, you will conduct that ritual yourself um, whilst dressed as a priestess and the um, hopefully distracting uh, the, the, the bad guys, as it were, and so you can save the children. Those are your top level objectives. Uh -huh. How you go about that, it really is up to you. Um, there are a few Easter eggs tucked away in there, um, a few uh, little tricks, um, depending on what character you have. So there's many ways to approach a mission. Uh, broad objectives are, of course, always the same. One, one thing that we were um, sort of looking at was we have to be careful in not spoiling too much of the story because exactly. this, this is a very, narrative, yes. very much of a narrative game, so you don't want to say so much about the story. Indeed. So uh, we picked this scenario for a reason. You know, wh why was it that you know, this specific scenario is, you know, because it shows enough of the game and then... We felt that it, it, it showed the game well. It, it's an environment that we haven't showed before. Um, it's, uh, as you can see, a nighttime setting this time around. Um, it showcased new characters. Uh, it's, it's a chronological progression from what we've shown before as well. Uh, as, as we touched on briefly last time, the, uh, the chronology of the game moves around quite a lot. Uh, this, this is a chronological progression from what we have seen before. Um, it's, uh, it's always been a nice looking level. Uh, you will recall from uh, early presentations we've done internally, this, this was kind of one of the first levels we had that, uh, that looked good. So it, it's always been a, a strong contender. All right, uh, so from... Annie did something different now. She's yes. gone through this cliff. Uh, Annie has uh, kind of zoomed in here. There's uh, a cliff outpost overlooking where you need to be. Um, there's a lot of bad guys out there. So. Um, we have sent Max up ahead here to take care of the, uh, the couple of troops who are, who are manning, uh, manning the overlook. Um, and uh, Max has done what Max does best, um, silently sneaking up to people. Um, I was distracted, so I don't know uh, whether these people remain alive or not. I think so. They are tied up. Um, okay. so. Well, one other thing um, uh, comes to mind is, you know, how 
hard is going to be, you know, the final game going to be? Is, is it a hard game? You know, for, uh, we've got a lot of Stargate fans out there who are, you know, looking for just some, you know, genuine entertainment, right? For, for me, I would, I would say it's the biggest challenge in, in getting the game completed. The, the number one thing in my in, in tray, as it were, balancing the challenge of um, a stealth game to offer uh, the level of complexity and difficulty that, that people who enjoy these games want to play and offering a challenge for those players, but also allowing people who want to engage with the game very casually and just explore a new Stargate story and almost approach it from a narrative point of view. Um, as the game is large. There, there's a lot of story to be told. I, I've, I've been through it line by line. That there's, there's, there's an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, so we really do want to make the game accessible for, for both of those uh, groups of people, it, it's absolutely the number one thing uh, I, I want to achieve. It's the first time, I think, in the Slytherin history where we uh, almost get, you know, um, attached to single characters, right? It's like, you know, we're used to talk about different types of games, and this one is more about the story, the characters, and it's the first time we've got a heavily narrative-driven game. It, that's it's very narrative-driven, yes. Uh, as I just said, there, there's an awful lot of uh, story there. MGM have been very involved in the approvals process. They, they've been through every line and, and vetted it, and uh, they were obviously insisting that it, it meets the standards um, that, that we would expect from a a well-respected property like Stargate. Uh, we, are, we are telling uh, yeah, a long story here. We, we feel it's a good one with a, a lot of twists and turns, which of course we, we don't want to reveal, but there's no point in telling that, that deep, uh, involving story yeah. if, if people have to give up halfway through because yeah. they're, they're, they're stuck on a, a mountain ridge or in a, a Mayan temple or, or what have oh, you. Um, Sam is doing a good job there or not? Sam's doing very well indeed. Um, he, is, he is crouching in the bushes. Um, we can see um, a civilian there. As civilians, unless they see something explicitly bad going wrong, um, okay. they'll okay. just leave you. Um, what happened there? That's the Zap gun, the stun gun, um, which Sam carries. So that will briefly stun um, a Jaffa general, which is your window of opportunity uh, to, to get up behind him. And, uh, now he's nicely tied up, get that mimetic scanner going, and there we go. Um, you can see that Sam in the bottom left-hand corner now, um, his, his uh, avatar in the bottom left-hand corner is now in disguise. Um, the, the figure in the playfield as well is, uh, is now in disguise. Um, so you see these guys now, oh, they're chill. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Good job, Annie. Smoothly done. Uh, there is something—a meeting of soldiers just hanging around, nattering to each other, here. not doing very much. Ah, how bold are the guys now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, easy. you need some nerve to be uh, to be crawling around in a camp, certainly. Uh, Annie is zooming in here to uh, another Jaffa general. You are in disguise, so you, s you will see the eye icon uh, above the Jaffa general's head. Uh, essentially, that means he is, he is not fooled um, by your disguise. Normal rules still apply, uh, so you can crouch, crawl through the broken part of his view cone, but if you're in the solid part of his view cone, he's going to spot you. So there's an awful lot going on here, um, mainly civilians. You're, you're in a civilian part of the world. <gasps> I think something went wrong. I think Annie may be in trouble here. There's another guy up around the corner. Um, I think something I went think wrong. I think he may have spotted you, the other fellow. Annie. Ah, uh, 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 well, it's good. It's good. We're happen, alive. We're alive. So we basically. How, how does that, so basically, once you complete one objective, you can restart from that objective? Well, you can, you can save pretty much anywhere. It's a vitally important part of a, of a so game. So Annie like actually it. did this to show us how the save process works. When we were setting up earlier, I, I did say, do make sure to fail a couple of times. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. it all looks real. And you it, did and it very well of, on that. It kind of showcases yeah. what happens. And uh, I think that is objective achieved. So this camp here, uh, so the next objective is to go to uh, Svidra's house? Svidra is the uh, priestess. Um, so you, um, 
you already know that your next objective is to get through the gate that we saw in the top right hand corner there. That's been explained um, in, in audio in the fly pass at the start. So that's part of your route uh, onto the gate. Um, So what is Max doing all this time? Max is, um, well, as, as Sam would put it, he's essentially loafing around. But uh, there Max is over there, um, keeping an eye out on things. Um, he, will, he will be there to clear the way for, uh, for Sam when he comes through. Um, so. I, I can see that on the bottom right-hand corner, you, you see the map and the, what the screen is um, looking at at the moment. And it does look pretty big. It, it really is uh, very big indeed. Um, you, I think even trying to speed run this when you know exactly what you're doing, we wouldn't have been able to, to fit it all into this uh, time slot. So we're expecting that each mission for an experienced player of games of, of this type when coming to, coming to the game for the first time, it's probably going to take them at, at least an hour of at least an hour of challenge. So we, we've, we've got a, a strong campaign, we feel, with, with, a, with a good amount of challenge in here. Um, whilst um, Annie is trying to sort herself out there, uh, when, when is the game going beta? So the game is more or less feature complete at this point. Um, everything that needs to be in there is in there, um, with the exception of uh, a good amount of VO. Uh, the VO um, has been going in over the last couple of months. Um, the VO also dictates uh, a lot of the tutorial elements of the game. All right, yeah. So we're about a month away from having all that complete. Um, at that point, um, I imagine we will look at it internally and uh, kind of see yeah. what we think about it. Um, but I would hope that we will be in a position to, to be to this um, at some stage in the summer. It, it's okay. coming, it's okay. coming it's relatively not, it's soon. Not too far away. I, I really well, don't think it, it's too far away. We know that July is, uh, July is a big anniversary for SG1, is it? July is, I am uh, quite frightened to remember, 25 years, I 25 think, from, years, from yeah. SG1. I, I can well remember watching it on television when it was a new thing, and, and suddenly that's 25 years ago. So yes, uh, July is, is indeed a, a, a big date in the, in the Stargate calendar, so it would be lovely. Uh, to have something ready for then, but of course we need to make sure that it's uh, that it's ready for ah. for public consumption. I think something bad happened again. Yes, I think I only got a bit casual there. I think one of the um, the cool thing is things I see about um, about uh, this game is that I mean, for the first time I can see. It. Ah, <laughs> come on, Annie. Come on, Annie. Come on, Annie. <laughs> um, I think you should be you should be popping out this tent, guns blazing, and killing everyone. That's you're not going to get very far by guns <laughs> blazing. Uh, yeah, we're uh, that, that's that's. There are elements of violence you will always need to use. There are elements of stealth you will always need to use. How exactly you will go about that will uh, will always be a part of uh, a part of the challenge. We can see there that obviously a guard is alerted by uh, seeing not just you, but by seeing a, a body on the floor there. So. so what happened there now? Well, as Annie was tying a character up, uh, one of the guards uh, spotted something okay. uh, untoward going along there. Um, right now she's managed to... She's managed to sneak off behind there whilst they were um, concerned okay. about the body okay. itself. Okay. And, uh, now they've got no, no real idea where to go. They will continue to be irate for a while and come looking for her. Um, however, Annie is going to trip the next cutscene um, as a sort of useful point um, oh. to, to escape from that, that uh, anger which she deliberately uh, provoked there. Uh, there's been something of a failure of communication here and uh, the story takes a bit of a twist. Um, so that's one of ours, right? I'm afraid so, yes. Aha. Yes, we were not expecting that. It turns out that there is um, a third agent in the mission um, who is Atar, a Jaffa girl, um, whom we met uh, again very briefly at the last Home of War Gamers as an, uh, an assistant uh, to Eva in Mission 2. Um, as a Jaffa, she is um, faster and, and stronger than the, the Tauri characters, the, the Earth characters. 
Um, she is good at, uh, she can pickpocket characters. Uh, she also has stun abilities. Uh, she's a very accomplished climber. She is good at luring people towards her, planting lures, and uh, bringing characters towards her. Uh, so, yes, she, she too has her range of abilities. Okay. What's your favourite character? My favourite character, I, I must admit that I like the grizzled cynicism of Max the Sniper. All right, uh, for okay. some reason, I find that quite relatable. Oh, uh -huh, again. I mean, you've got lots of corpses around here. Well, I, it's a dirty business, unfortunately. Um, whilst you do have the option, uh, Sam does have the option, whilst dressed as a general, to uh, distract some of the foot soldiers with chit-chat. Um, it, it's not generally an option uh, in, in this yeah, game. Makes you've, sense. You, you've, you've got to dish out a, a fair bit of violence. This is a, a very busy... Um, a very busy mission. There's, there's an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of bad dudes uh, to be to be taken care of. Well, this is this a night mission. mission. Does does night and the light of day and night does it, does it influence your how you play the game? It does. Night doesn't particularly. No, the challenges still remain the same. Uh, it's not like you can creep around easily at night and okay. just do what you want. And, and they have a field of vision only that far in front of them. That that just doesn't really work from a gameplay perspective. So uh, the night thing is. Is, is more or less visual, really, just just showcasing a difference. You will still be up against a sort of very, a very similar level of challenge. I, I, in this mission now, we have three characters, uh, and this is mission number. This is mission three, number three. Three, as right? Well, so, yes. in further into the game, how many characters will you be controlling uh, at the same time? I think, off the top of my head, that there are never more than three to control okay. at any one time. Um, there might possibly be one of the later missions where you are controlling four. Um, uh, probably got the developers going mad in the chat at me at the moment, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, as I say, there might possibly be one with four, but uh, there's a lot to take care of. Any character is almost inherently a risk. A uh, character is something that can be discovered. Uh, so trying to manage four of those uh, can be something of a challenge. So uh, three seems, uh, from our, our testing so far, to be about the right Reasonable. balance. Yeah, yeah. It depends what comes up in beta, of course. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So what's happening here now? So what's happening here is um, that Atar is uh, sneaking around. Um, we have, um, I was again distracted, I, I think somebody has been blinded, is that right? Uh, so our, our sniper has blinded somebody with a, with a flashbang from over there, uh, so they have a very narrow uh, blue view cone. There we go, there's just an example. Um, you can see, can you bring up the view cone for that character maybe, Annie, just to sort of illustrate? Um, there you go. Well, he's recovered now by the time I thought to ask. Uh, but yeah. you can, you can, uh, the sniper has an ability um, not just to shoot people where you will leave a corpse that will be discovered if you can't get to it, but he can fire a, a flashbang that will severely limit a guard's uh, view cone for a few crucial seconds, so allowing you to get past them. Obviously, they'll be on a stage of high alert once they recover their vision. Uh, All right. All right. So uh, there, there are a number of new uh, skills in play, um, which I... So just took a, take a look at the UI there, uh, whilst we, we're, we take a look at the scene. So uh, uh -huh. the UI, you've got like, on the left-hand side, you've got a list of characters you've got available. Selecting yes. one of the characters will open their so available kits or abilities. Yes, yes. Um, you will all, um, it, it's uh, very clear to see who you're controlling. You have the, the tab of three characters on the left-hand side. They all have a signature colour. Okay. Uh, one of one of the uh, peculiarities of Slytherin is that uh, we only hire colourblind producers. Um, <laughs> right. it, it's company policy, seemingly. Uh, so we always make sure that uh, even for colourblind people, this this works well. Uh, so each has their signature colour. So almost immediately, you know who you're controlling. Uh, you have uh, a big uh, avatar in the bottom left-hand corner, which shows you not just the character you're controlling, but what state they're in, whether they're crouching. You can see when Max is holding his gun, you can see when they're carrying a body. We saw Sam earlier, who was um, in, in disguise, for example. You could see what he was disguised as. So you always know what your characters are, are doing. Um, your skills are in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, they're just mapped to uh, a number of numbers. Each character has unique abilities. It's not like everybody can stun and everybody can uh, you know, scan people's memories and, and so on and so forth. So, um, um, yes, every character has their advantages and disadvantages. I think the, um, I, I really al al always love the, uh, the scenario art, but um, also, you know, starting to um, 
I'm pleased to see that all the animations and such are really shaping up to you know, well, well, yeah, be pretty high standard now. I, I've been really pleased with the progress we've made, uh, particularly on our animation um, recently. Uh, we, we've made sort of huge strides on that. Um, and e even in the last few days, as we've desperately got ready for this uh, oh, for this, uh, It was all easy. When we received, day. We received this build, what, like... 20 minutes before the uh, much going more, live? Much more than 20 minutes. Yeah, we received it in time. <laughs> we downloaded it so, and it was uh, all. But we had yes. like a number of B plans anyway, B uh, and C and D plans. Always. So. It was the first yeah. thing I learned, probably also about 25 years ago, is so. always have a plan B in this business. So. Especially uh, if you're so. playing Stargate. <laughs> So absolutely, a lot will go wrong. That, 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 that is the nature of the game. Uh, so you, know, you, you have to learn to manage that. Uh, a lot of uh, stealth games are always in your face and, and telling you to, to save every 30 seconds and so on. And we've chosen not to do that so far. We didn't particularly like the way it worked. Um, again, we'll have to see how that goes in, in beta and uh, see what the community think of that, whether it's something they would prefer to see uh, more upfront or not. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to community feedback on. I think the uh, the other um, thing, uh, you know, I was I was looking at the different uh, scenarios we've got, and there's a lot of variety as well. It's not like you know, showing this doesn't give you a full idea of the game because the game has so many different situations, varieties of landscapes and scenarios. It's crazy, right? Uh, it really ev everything is different. Um, e everyone is is completely different. We could we could do. 14, 15 of these Home of Wargamer events and showcase something different every time. Um, yeah, everything is, is completely different, but it doesn't feel like it's different for the sake of it. Each, uh, each different landscape brings different challenges. It advances the story in a sensible fashion. Um, bear in mind uh, also the time loop mechanism on which we touched briefly yeah. in December. You'll be able to go back and replay previous missions uh, anyway. So um, it, it's not enough to have a, a small variation of level artwork style uh, because you're already able to go back and uh, replay those levels with new technologies and with new knowledge um, to, to get a new challenge out of those anyway. So uh, the variety in landscapes, um, it, it, it really is fantastic. I think, I think it's one of the strongest features of the game. Yeah, I, th I think most of these, usually most of these games have this, you know, repeat scheme, right? You know, yeah. there's th these types of games have, have a setting and, you know, almost the setting is di dictating the landscapes, the scenarios, the characters and so on. With Stargate, with the luxury of exploring different planets and Absolutely. And, and such, I, right? As you were talking then, I was thinking, well, our setting is the universe. Um, but we've really seized that opportunity and, uh, and, and really made the most of that, I think. So, uh, you know, the next level looks very different to this, as does the one after the one. After. Everything is, is really very different. And there are some, I don't know whether we'll uh, ever get to show them before, uh, before the game is public. But, uh, I hope not. We're going to spoil all the story and... Uh... <laughs> It, That's, uh, there are some very, very intelligent things they've done with the, uh, just the environmental design as well. So it, it's not like every level has, has cliffs, and cliffs are always important. Uh, there, are, there are some levels that work uh, in very different fashions because of the environment. And I'm trying to think of a clever way to express that without revealing anything. But I have not been successful. No, I, 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 think, you've been, I think you've been successful. I think the, the, the cool thing that we have to, I, I always take away from Stargate is that, well, I'm excited because it's the first narrative-driven game. It's the first time we, uh, we publish a game with such a deep um, attachment to characters and, 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 and the story and such. And I think this is really delivering on the Stargate idea. You know, Stargate is a narrative-driven universe. I, I've been very taken aback um, by the depth of affection that people hold Stargate in and how much it means to, to so many people, not just in the fan community, but also at MGM and, and now at Amazon as well. There's, there's a lot of love for Stargate uh, internally. People are, people are very keen that we make the best game that we can to do justice to the, to the Stargate community so uh, yeah it's a big challenge a uh, big responsibility but, yeah um, we're talking about MGM we've got a um, I got a video message from uh, you know a, um, a friend of ours at MGM yes, from, uh, so uh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna play that and uh, we'll be right back hello my name is Matt Group and I'm the director of production for interactive games here at MGM 
we could not be more excited to be telling a new story with original characters set in the SG-1 universe through Stargate Timekeepers. It truly has been a pleasure working with the team to bring this exciting new title to life. Today is a special day where you'll be able to see new details about the game. We really hope you enjoy it.